Here is the environment for SketchUp Pro, and you may notice a few extra toolbars. Basically what I've done, using the extension manager, I've downloaded things like a working plane, so I can lock any modeling items to a working plane. I've downloaded this 1001 bits tools, which I'll show you shortly. And more essentially, I've downloaded Trimble Scan Essentials to allow me to work with the point cloud. And you can see those in the different dialog boxes here, with the Trim Scan Essentials, just here, the working plane over here, and then the 1001 bit tools over here, this long toolbar. This is quite beneficial because it has things like a wall tool, stairs, roofs, and it's quite a good toolbox to aid the development and the generation of your 3D model. So the first thing I'm going to do is load in a point cloud. So I do this through the Scan Essentials dialog box. Clicking on the File Open option here, you can see under the file formats, we can open a SketchUp file, an E57 file, an LAS file, a Trimble Scan file, or a PLY file. Now by default, as mentioned earlier, we only generate an XYZ and an OBJ file in our matter pack. So one of the benefits of being an enterprise customer is we've just released the E57 beta option against your models. If you don't have that option, then what you can do is convert your XYZ file to an E57 file quite simply. You can do that in two ways. Firstly, as you can see in the example here, I've got one that I've done in recap. Secondly, if you download Cloud Compare, which is a free piece of software, you can import your point cloud as an XYZ into here, highlight it in the tree over here, and when you go to File Save, you've got all these options down at the bottom to create that E57 file very quickly, very easily, and very efficiently. Moving back to SketchUp now, I'm actually going to use the one that I converted using Cloud Compare. So simply just select it, click Open, save my SketchUp file. So I'm just going to overwrite a file I've got here already. And then depending on how big the point cloud is, will depend on how long it takes to import the point cloud. So here you can see our point cloud has been imported very quickly. So we've now got something we can work with. A couple of things I'm going to do first is firstly, I'm just going to go to the camera view turn off perspective, and then go to a standard top view to look at this. Now I want the orientation to be slightly different. So to move your point cloud around in SketchUp, you use the Scan Essentials dialog box here. To move, you simply select this option here, pick it up and move it across, and then to rotate it, you click on the rotation tool, you enter an axis first, and then simply rotate it back to that same axis to give you the orientation that you desire. So there's several options for converting this into CAD geometry in SketchUp. So I'm going to go through three options. The first and simplest option in here is to use the rectangle tools and the push pull tools within SketchUp itself. So I'm just going to enable this option here where we can snap to the point cloud or to the SketchUp options. Snapping to the point cloud, I can take a standard rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a small rectangle on this wall area here. Quick rotation to see that I've got an alignment. Zoom in a little bit and then I'm now going to change the options to a SketchUp pick. So it'll pick SketchUp options over everything else. And then just using the manipulation move tool here, pick up on the edge, lock it to an axis, and just stretch this rectangle out so it fits the shape that I'm actually looking to trace. And again, these are just standard tools within SketchUp for working with, with any different objects. So for the purposes of this, that's good enough. So again, I've got the option here to now extrude this or push pull using the tool up here, and I can push that out, pull it out to the edge here. And quite quickly, if I use the options up here to turn down the density of the point cloud, you can see I've got a solid block. Now there are several ways we can now work with this. The quickest way I generally use is just to pick the top elements on the edge here, and what I want to do is generate the wall structure. So I'm just going to use the offset tool, pick on one edge, pull it out, type in 150 mil on my keyboard, that gives me my wall. I can then go to my push pull tool and pull that down, just rotate down a little bit so I can see the bottom. And then in here, we've very quickly got our walls. And then we could just delete this section in here to show us our walls in there. So very quick, very easy to generate a block that represents part of the building. And then I could just go around and start to model all the different spaces in this particular building. So that's option one, very quick, very easy to do. We'll just now delete this part of the the model and we'll move on to option two. Now option two is to trace around in a plan view again but this time using the line tool. So if I look at this from the top again move it over to a location I'm happy with. Now if I start drafting here I don't know whether I'm picking on the top corner because I'm looking at the top view 
or the bottom corner. So this is where the working plane comes into play. If I just hide the point cloud for now, I'm just going to set a working plane across two axes, and there's my working plane. I can then turn back on my point cloud, look at it from the top. Now, what we want to do is turn off the snap into the SketchUp items and to the point cloud. I'm just going to disable all snaps. I double click on the working plane to activate it. Using the line tool now, I'm just going to quickly trace around this edge. I'm not going to be too particular for the purposes of this video. If you want it more accurate, you can spend more time doing it. Like I say, it just gives you an impression of how quickly we can convert this particular point cloud into a model just by tracing around with the line tool. So when we get to the end, we just hover over the point we started, double click, and that will give us our surface. If we rotate around, you see we've now got a surface locked to our working plane that outlines the shape of our walls. The next thing we do is select that, use the offset tool again, click on an edge, type in a value of 150 mil, and that gives us our offset. Then we go to our push pull tool again, click on the area that we want to extrude, which is that one, rotate around so we can see our ceiling height and extrude that up. And then very quickly, you can see if we turn off our point cloud, we've got the shape of our walls and we can continue on and now fill in the rest of the gaps for all the other rooms. So that was option two. So we'll just delete this and move on. So option three now is to use some of these tools from the 1001 bit tool palette. The first thing I'm going to do is go to a standard camera view and this time look at it from the left. Now within the Scan Essentials tool palette, we have the options here to create our own clipping boxes. So using this option here, I can simply drag a clipping box through there, look at it, and you can see that we've got our point cloud that we can trace around. This is similar process to what we do in other CAD software, so it makes it quite easy to do within SketchUp as well. So when we're ready, we double click on our working plane, we make sure our snaps are off, we go to our wall tool, we set our width and our height and our alignment, we then start to build the wall by simply tracing round the elements within here. So I'm going to trace around here, pick up on my chimney breast here, trace around to the wall, and then just follow it around in the same way as we've done before. Very quick, very easy. Again, I'm not being too particular here. Double click when we get to the end to finish off that shape. And then when we rotate, you can see that using a slice through the point cloud, we very quickly started to generate our walls. So if we turn our point cloud off, you can see exactly what we've got. If we turn it back on, we can also isolate that clipping box and start to see how we've done with our walls. Again, we could start to trace around the rest of it. So this tool palette is really effective at helping to create building elements within SketchUp. So the processes there are all individual, but can all be used together to create the model. We don't have to focus on just using one of the three techniques. So the process being, we scan using the Matterport hardware, upload and process in the cloud, download the matter pack, extract it, convert the XYZ file to an E57 file, import that into SketchUp and start using the tools to generate our 3D model elements. I hope that's been of use and thank you for watching.